Okay, so I mentioned how Protopasta promises extra strength and rigidity for their HDPLA line of filaments if you essentially bake them in the oven and anneal them. This causes the typically unorganized amorphous microstructure of the plastic to crystallize and form larger grains that are much more of a consistent uniform element within themselves instead of this chaotic mess. Protopasta recommend about 110 degrees Celsius for about an hour which is exactly how I baked these samples of HTPLA CF, which contain carbon fiber. And just for fun, I also included regular PLA, which really doesn't claim to be anything special, as well as E3D Edge, which is a co-polyester. I set the timer for an hour, and when I came back, the Protopasta HTPLA CF looked pretty good. The vertically printed test part had warped slightly, and that was about it. The E3D Edge co-polyester was pretty much gone at this point and pretty solidly stuck to the plate. I guess the temperature was just a bit too high for it. But what caught my attention here was that the plain PLA part looked perfectly fine. In fact, there was no trace of it having softened or warped at all. But who knows, maybe the co-polyester just totally underperformed here, so I didn't really give it a second thought. What seemed to be a common factor between all these parts is that they all shrunk along the layers and expanded somewhat perpendicular to that. So the X and Y dimensions got smaller, while the original Z axis grew. I'd assume that this is due to the way parts cool during printing and the way that tension is locked into them. The fiber infused HTPLA only shrunk 2.5% along the layers and did not expand perpendicularly to them. The plain PLA shrunk by about 5% and grew 2% in height, while parts printed in edge, or what's left of them, shrunk about 4% in X and Y and grew roughly 3.5% in the Z direction. So yeah, if you want to make use of an annealing process, definitely keep that in mind, and preferably compensate for that before printing. The Protopasta HTPLA CF then went on to score exactly the same low strength rating as in its unannealed form but at least demonstrated about 20% better stiffness than before. So there's definitely something that's happening here. But still, I'm, I'm starting to get the feeling that I'm doing something wrong with this CF filament, as, I mean, it prints nicely, but doesn't really give any advantages strength-wise. When it comes to the heat resistance test with boiling water, the annealed part also did significantly better than its untreated brother, and it felt pretty much like ABS at this point, or maybe even a bit better, where it's not really bothered by the heat. Sure, if you put some force into it, you can separate the layers, but you can do that even with cold ABS parts. So the annealed HDPLA parts definitely have their strong suit here. Right, so that part was as expected. Just on a quick note, I did get different numbers for the E3D edge print as well, but considering how much it deformed, it's not really a comparable test anymore. Sure, something happened there as well, but it's probably on a macroscopic level where you just have the layers welded together much better now. Now, this next part blew my mind just a, a tiny bit. Everything that worked for the HTPLA also works for the dime a dozen standard PLA, and with even better results than with the carbon fill type, actually. Strength saw about a 40% increase over the untreated part. Stiffness increased about 25%, and temperature stability was as good as I just described for the HTPLA part. This means as long as you can compensate for the shrinkage and you know maybe any warp you might see with thinner details, this test result makes the heat-treated standard PLA the best performing material in the entire Philoween test series yet. This was unexpected. So as it stands right now, if you need stiff, high tensile strength parts with excellent heat resistance and don't mind the extra strip of annealing them, plain old PLA might just be the perfect material for that. But of course, this is just a single data point and doesn't mean that this will work for every single material. There might also be other downsides, something like a higher tendency to crack over time or a faster degradation in wet environments. I don't know, but I'd appreciate your input on this. If you decide to try annealing parts yourself, leave a comment below on how it went for you and if you've got any other tips to share, don't hesitate to let me know. Also, like, subscribe, you know, use the affiliate links, check out my Patreon, all that good stuff. Thanks for watching. See ya.